No de qué criterio, de tres que criterio. Tres que criterio is also based on another concept, but related to that, that, that well, let's assume that the material fails when the maximum shear stresses at the point reach some limit. So let's now look for a while to the Morse space tau sigma in 3D. Imagine that we have the three principal stresses, we build the Mohr circle, and what is the maximum at this point? What is the maximum shear stress achieved at that point? Is that one? There is no direction in which the shear stress is greater than that. Okay, so let's see that the material can sustain a certain amount of this maximum uh, stress. So when the Mohr circle, which starts being zero, we can just produce some, some stress states which translate into more circles, which increase, decrease, moving in the space, but this is the limit. This is the limit. When in a certain point, in the maximum point, there is one plane in which this shear stress is fails, the maximum shear stress at every plane, at every plane in the point reaches a certain limit, then we consider that the material fails. So that's, that's also applicable to metals because we are assuming that then failure is not, look, I can increase that maximum stress as much as I wish, that minimum as much as I wish. The problem is not the maximum or the minimum shear, uh, principal stress. The problem is the, is the difference. Okay? In triaxial stress states, the more circle is what? In hydrostatic stress states, the more circle is a point. So it will never fail, even for infinite value of the stresses. But as soon as we have different first and third principal stresses, which determine the maximum uh, shear stress, the material may fail. So this translates, written that in terms of a function, that sigma 1 minus sigma 3 minus Sigma e, sigma e being the uniaxial elastic limit, equal to zero. So what, what function is that? Is sigma 1 minus sigma 3. A measure, sigma 1 minus sigma 3, a measure of the maximum shear stress at the point. It can be proven that this can be rewritten in terms of the invariance. And look, if I write this difference in terms of the invariance, I arrive to an expression that doesn't depend on the first invariant. It depends on the second and on the third. Okay? So looking at that equation, what do you think would be that surface, that surface, in the stress space, what would be the equation of that surface? A linear combination of the coordinates, of some of them. So what is the the equation, the geometrical interpretation of a function which is a linear, a linear combination of the, uh, of the coordinates. It's a plane. Okay? But if some of the coordinates doesn't appear here, that means that it's a plane parallel to that coordinate that doesn't appear here. So this is a plane <coughs> which, just before doing anything else, that would be a plane parallel to the axis sigma 2. That's it. That is the plane. That is a plane which is parallel to sigma 2. So looking at that point, and look, and I'm going back to the fact that we are looking due to the order that we have chosen, we just see what happens in the first octant, that octant here. And this is a plane which is parallel to the axis sigma 2. If we want to extend that to other, the other octants, then we have just to symmetrize. So that plane, which of course is not longer valid in that place, in that place here, because this takes that us out of the working octant. So if you want to generalize that to all the stress domain, you have to do this symmetrization. And this, what is that? Is that an prism? an hexagonal prism whose axis is the hydrostatic axis, 
Okay? And that is inscribed, by the way, it's inscribed in the von Mises cylinder. Again, it's not bounded in the in the direction of the, of the uh, hydrostatic axis, but it's bounded in the orth in the orthodontal, orthodontal plane. So essentially, it's the same. The differences are relatively small. The differences are these differences. So that cylinder, that that uh, would be the cylinder, would be the von Mises cylinder, and the inscribed hexagon would be of prismatic uh, hexagonal. A prism would be the Thresca, the Thresca criterion. But the consequence is the same. There is a small difference. For instance, if we apply now the von Tresca, the von the Tresca criterion to the uniaxial stress state, then what we obtain, look, the sigma u can be positive or negative. So that's a uniaxial, eh? that's not the bending case. Uniaxial. Look. Sigma u can be positive or negative. If positive, sigma 1 is sigma u, and sigma 3 is 0. If negative, sigma 1 is 0, sigma 3 is 1, sigma u. So the criterion, in that case, will return sigma u minus sigma e equals 0. So that is modulus of sigma u minus sigma e equals 0. And in that case, will be minus sigma u, which is the modulus of sigma u, minus sigma e. So it's the same criterion. So finally, for 1D cases, that Tresca criterion, criterion can be written in that way. S modulus of, of uh, mm, modulus of sigma u minus sigma e equals zero, which is the same that for the one misses. So that's why in these directions, this corresponds to uniaxial stress cases. Whenever we move along one of these axes, we are in a uniaxial stress case. Okay? And in that case, of course, both criterion coincide. But if we move in all directions, which are not uniaxial, so we move <coughs> in axes which are not those, but we move generally inside here, then the criterion is different. For example, what is the criterion if now apply that for the beam in bending? But instead of a misses, instead of a misses, stress. Okay? Well, let's compute sigma 1, which looks like that. Let's compute sigma 3, which looks like that. Let's apply the criterion, sigma 1 minus sigma 3. And what do you obtain here? A comparison of stress, which is sigma x. So there's a mistake here. It's 4. This should be a, a 4. Sigma x squared plus 4 times xy squared is the comparison of strain. Look that the other one was sigma the other, the formation was sigma x squared plus 3. Now it's plus 4. Not big difference. When tau x is equal 0, in fact, no difference. When there is tangential stress, there is a, an extra weight. It's a little more conservative. The criteria with Tresca is a little more conservative than the criteria for, with Volmises under uh, shear stresses. But essentially applicable to the same type of problems, metal. Okay? Metals. Okay. Let's go for another one. Now, retrieving the methodology that we have taken for the Tresca criterion, that the initial point was saying, okay, the metal, the material fails when the maximum shear stress in the Morse Coulomb, in the, in the sorry, in the Morse space, reaches a certain value. Okay? But now let's consider that that limit, that limit that in the in the Tresca limit, in the Tresca case, was an horizontal line, an horizontal line. So independent of what is the position of this circle in the sigma direction, now let's consider that there is a dependence of the limit as a straight line. This straight line can be characterized by two facts. One, that value. This is called the cohesion, cohesion. And that angle, that's called, can you, can you make a guess? Friction angle. The friction angle. So this is able for frictional materials. And you know, 
it's, it, it's saying that this is an equation, it can be written in that way, that the tau is equal to c minus sigma tangent of, tangent of phi. That means that the moment of failure, that is when the Bohr circle enters into contact with this line, depends very much on what is the position of the point in that direction. So for that direction, there is a slow range. But if we move in that sense, the range, the, the size of the Bohr circle, the domain of admissible stresses is large. Okay? So what materials have a range of elasticity which depends essentially on the <laughs> amount of the uh, axial stresses. Sorry. These are called geomaterials. Geomaterials. Materials which has not a crystalline matrix like metals. Metals have crystal matrix. Are made of crystals or the molecules. And that means they have some properties. There are other materials, cementitious materials, that are amorphous materials too, which have no crystalline network inside. And these materials behave very different, are made typically of particles which are aggregated through some matrix. This is for soils, that's it, for rocks, for concrete. Concrete, in that sense, is not as different from soils, from sands, from rocks. All they belong to the same family, and they are characterized because their strength depends pretty much their tangential strength, in that sense, depend very much on the normal stresses that, it, that are sustaining. Okay? Okay, how does it translate into our framework? Well, it's a matter of operation. From the position of that, I can co co compute what is the equation in terms of the principal stresses. This is the in terms of sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, blah, blah, blah. Finally, I see that that condition for failure can be translated into that way. A combination of sigma 1 minus sigma 3 plus sigma 1 plus sigma 3 in terms of the friction angle in terms of the, co of the, of the cohesion. Now the material properties are no longer the elastic limit, but these materials which are the cohesion and the friction angle. That is what characterizes typically a cementitious material that fails under the more color criteria. Look, anyway, mathematically speaking, this is a linear combination of sigma 1 and sigma 3. Though this again will look as a plane parallel to the axis sigma 2. Okay? But now it's no longer parallel to the axisymmetric axis, to the hydrostatic axis. It's that plane. That plane. This is the cone. This is a pyramid, so to speak, a pyramid. An hexagonal pyramid, look, whose uh, section decreases as we move in that direction. <coughs> so as we arrive here, as we arrive here, there is the, 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 the stress space that uses to just one point. And we can never go here. So that is why there is uh, the, the apex, the apex of this, of this pyramid. In compression instead, in compression, in negative values, in compression, that is, can, be, can be enlarged and, and moves to also compression, so there is no limit. So that is what the pyramid looks like that. Again, the pyramid is a pyramid because that plane is now symmetrized according to the rule that I said before, in that way. So this is not this is not a regular hexagon, by the way. This is not regular, so it's not fully inscribed. Okay, there are points inside, etc. And it's a function of the three variants. So that is why it's a general plane, it's a linear function of the stresses, so it's a plane that after symmetrization translates into this pyramid, whose cross-section is an irregular hexagon. Okay? Look that there is a limit. That limit here is typical. Square root of 3 times the cohesion times the cotangent of 5. That is the maximum, the maximum 
tensile triaxial stress that can be applied. What happens when the cohesion is zero? What happens if the cohesion is zero? Where is this apex going to? To the origin. So this, all these parameters are related to the origin. The material doesn't resist any tension. Any tension. This is for, you know, for, for sands. sands. <coughs> Many soils. Soils in general. Rocks, rocks, they resist some tension. Concrete, concrete, resist some tension. Of course, the compressive strength of the material under compression is infinite. Well, never infinite, but so large that we consider it infinite. infinite. This is what happens with this type of materials. Concrete, sands, soils, they resist the compression. Take a sand, make a triaxial test, and the strength is incredibly large. Make a triaxial tensile test. It's zero, zero. Make it for concrete. You will see that in compression is 10, 20 times more, uh, uh, more uh, stronger than, uh, stronger than uh, intention. The elastic limit intention is 20 times smaller than 10, from 10 to 20 times intention. So this is typically suitable for uh, metal, for cementitious material, for geometry. Okay, and there is a variation for that, which is the Drucker prior criterion. Well, there are some mathematical insight. It's relatively different. It looks different in terms of mathematics. It depends essentially again from the cohesion and the friction angle. It's a function like that. It doesn't depend on the third invariant. If it doesn't depend on the third invariant, it will be represented. It will be a there will be symmetric uh, uh, axial symmetry. So that means that this is a cone. That's a cone. The Drucker prior criterion is a cone. Again, that distance is the same than for Drucker prior. Look, it's a cone that contains the, the Mohr Coulomb uh, price, prism, uh, pyramid, sorry. Eh? It contains for your axial cases. In compression is the same, intention is not the same, but is relatively similar. It also characterizes materials that are much more resistant in compression than intention. By the way, we'll go back to that. I also talk about that. If we are talking about soils, that code will look op opposite because in soils we consider positive compressions. In, ge in, in geotechnics and negative tension. So many times you have seen that in the other way, just changing the criterion from the sign criterion for stressors, from uh, continuum mechanics to soil mechanics. But the concept is the same. Okay?